Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Arch Study View. I am your host, Cameron Gilmore. Patrick Jones brought the heat. Wow. Before we get into it, listen to this excerpt from my interview with him and just let's get right after it. It's just those things come out. They're going to come out, whether it's anger or, or substance abuse or, uh, you know, just screaming at somebody at, at a store that doesn't deserve it. And so we owe it to ourselves and we owe it to society to not be that angry person with all this like anxiety and, and depression stuff down. Besides, it's kind of funny to talk about, you know, that's an angle of my podcast that I appreciate, you know, I, I, I've been there, I, I've had some some really dark times and humor has been it, it's it, the dark times become good stories i think and and that's how i choose to to deal with it and it helps me to sort of laugh at you know it's it's like when you watch a scary movie and, and you laugh at the things jason Voorhees does right it's just it's a little bit of gallows humor but it, it helps get okay you- it's very important to understand what pat was saying in that clip right he uh, the one thing that stood out to me the most was this this is why i love this clip was Dark times become great stories. Just let's let's say that again because oftentimes I get, I'm a little slow, right? Dark times become great stories, and when I listen to that, it, it's true. We all have great stories, which are accompanied with dark times that we've gone through in our life. He specifically was talking about depression and anxiety that he continues to battle with every single day. But he's learned to become better. He's learned to become better at, 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 at recognizing the patterns that when they come up. He introduces humor to it, right? Finds humor in his life. And he finds that joy helps push out those times where he starts to feel a little anxious or he starts to feel a little uneasy and unbalanced. How often do we look at ourselves and look at and, and say to ourselves, how do I push out those dark times? How do I get through when my life starts to spiral out of control and it happens every single time social media look i'm not going to bag on social media because i use it to to build awareness of what we're doing social media oftentimes only shows the five percent of what people are wanting to see the joys the happies the cars the lifestyle everything they're doing great you know the picture perfect frame if you will what we need more is if people come out and say man i've had some really bad dark times i've really had some hard times and share those stories because through sharing stories is how we build a culture and how we build awareness around everything that we're talking about i think about when a lot of my dark times um growing up as as not only as a child as a less adolescent um, as a new parent um going through divorce uh, becoming a single parent and then Um, you know, becoming a bonus dad. There's so many aspects and so many particular stories that you could, I could pull from uh, that just allows me to be the person I am today, very open and transparent. It's not always been that way. You know, I'm, I'm a very closed off individual for a number of reasons. However, what I've learned that I need to start doing and become way better at is, is sharing and opening up so my story of how I am here today, you can see where I am, can inspire and lift other people's, other people, not people's, but well, I mean, other people, 100%. Globally, people want to know, how do you guys get get through what, what all of us get through? I mean, we all struggle with that. I remember specifically a time when um, I was just a single, I was a single dad um, and I had all my kids and uh, man, they, it was probably eight months into having them all, they were, they, were, they were living at me. And I remember just the chaos that was going on in my house. Um, chaos means just the, the manage of emotions and the highs and the lows, the rides that we were going through. And so it, it, was, it was just late at night and, and sitting there thinking to myself, how am I going to be able to balance everything, my life? building myself back up. I was already in a good place. I need to get to a way better place. How was I going to build myself up? How was I going to help manage the emotions of my children and all the things that they have just gone through? Um, How are we going to inject the new life of this new norm that we're going to be within, right? How are we going to inject that into our lives? 
it was just this constant fear of, am I doing enough? Um, am I, am I giving him up? Am I giving too much? And every parent goes through that, right? Um, every parent looks at their life and says, what could I have done better? And that's why we always say, you know, grandkids are parents restart all the things we wish we should have done. We could now do with our grandkids. So those of you who have grandkids, you know what I'm talking about. It, it was just a lot of nights, a lot of nights of self reflection of who I am as a person, who I am as an individual, and then wanting to be able to not give up or, or allow the darkness to creep in. Cause there was, obviously plenty of nights that darkness did creep in darkness became not I don't want to say the norm but it, it became comfortable living in that dark space and that's a that's very dangerous right when you start become comfortable with that darkness and that it surrounds you and the darkness we're talking about is this belief system that we have that I am only as good as what others tell me or I'm only as good as what is going on in between my head. That's the biggest fight, right? The biggest fight is what goes on between our head. I recently just read a book and finished reading it called The Four Agreements, which is an absolute phenomenal book. It's right here, right? The Four Agreements. And it, 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 you, you agree with yourself. It, it talks a lot about agreeing with, uh, if, I, if I'm agreeing with I'm an idiot, then I'm, a, that's, that's, I'm agreeing with that point. If I agree that I'm smart, then I agree with that point. And that's kind of like this, the, the very basic element to it. However, this agreement can rise and fall the individual we're trying to build. And I love this point because history is full of dark times and people overcoming those dark times. And so when I listen to Pat talk about dark times become great stories, that is, <laughs> it's so true. It is so abundantly true. And for him to share that experience and share those growth opportunities, gosh, dang, man, that was such a great pivotal point during that conversation that I just absolutely loved him sharing it. All right, here's my second point. Listen to this next clip and then we'll come right back and talk. I need to give a shout out to my biggest sponsor, Warrior Energy Drink. The reason why we partner together is because we have the same mindset, we have the same drive. We're, we're for the people, we're about the people. Look, Warrior Energy Drink has zero sugar options and they got water as well. Low calories, great taste, very affordable, no crash, big energy fast, high in B vitamins, awesome, awesome design, culture design, 160 milligrams of caffeine. Other energy drinks have way, way too much and they're always giving it back to their community. They're paying it forward. Partner with them. Guys, click the link below. Go, go get yourself your own Warrior Energy Drink and go crush today. Carrying all these different bags and I'm just like, I'm having a, I'm having a bad day. Things are really starting to build, right? We've been in the pandemic. We've been more than a year and uh, my wallet, fell out of my pocket and I didn't know until I got uh back home you know carrying all these grocery bags and because you know in New York City it's just you're carrying it right? like it's it's not <laughs> worth it to get an Uber um and so I get back to the apartment and then realize it's missing called the grocery store and they're like yeah we got it on camera that a guy was four feet behind you saw your wallet picked it up and put it in his pocket and he could have easily like tapped me on the shoulder and like brightened my spirits. Like you wouldn't believe, but otherwise, but he chose the other way and was just like, I'm going to, I'm keeping this. And so I, the bottom fell out. I, I was just like, just trying to keep it together with all those other things going on. And like that happens. And it was just like, Oh, what a, I, I feel like I didn't laugh or feel any emotion beyond numbness for three months. Like my fiance was just like so afraid for me. I was just deeply depressed. Like it just, I don't know. It was like pulling the plug out of the bathtub. I was just like trying to keep all the water in there. And it just, I, I make up a lot of metaphors. I don't know if some of them land, some of them don't land. <laughs> but I, I think you know what I mean there. It's yeah. just really, really difficult. Um, and the interesting thing was moving to Charleston, I started to feel benefits pretty quickly, but you don't, 
you almost don't, it's like a, a survival mechanism where you don't understand the full weight of what you're experiencing until afterwards. And so it took a, a couple of months of just unraveling everything that we had just been through and just sitting in it, right? Not avoiding it and, and but also, you know, limiting it, right? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to deal with everything all at once. Um, but yeah, it just, it's no, it's been just slowly brick by brick, brick coming back. Um, and yeah, I, I miss New York, but this was, this was something that I needed and, and we needed and uh, so far so good. Hey guys, when you, when you listen to that part, when you listen to that clip, it's like the bottom falls out, right? Or the, uh, the other analogy is the straw that broke the camel's back. You, you think about that, like he was in three months three months he was just in the the pits of despair you know shout out to uh the princess bride literally in this 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 darkest space he feel like he just couldn't get out like there was no there's no way for him to get out of the mindset that he was in and really it, it put him in a dark place and it, it could be a, a number of things go back go back and, and listen to that because we all get to a point in our life where the bottom just feels like it's going to fall out and it does fall out, right? Whether it's a financial thing or whether it's, you know, relationships or our or, or, or interactions between our kids, our bosses, our jobs, the whole nine, like it just stacks on top of stacks on top of stacks on top of, and it's like, man, if this, in that example, right, he, he, his, he lost his wallet and somebody was four feet behind him, four feet behind him and just could have tapped him on his shoulder and said, here you go. But it crushed him. It crippled him. It, it put him into this place where he just had a hard time coming out of it. And the openness of Pat to, to share that experience was, is phenomenal. And so when we reflect on that, when we, when we think about that, when you, you go back and analyze this, right, there's, it happens. It happens in our lives, whether it's a job loss. I mean, think about it right now where people are afraid to go out and buy food is so expensive, those of you that listen to this years down the road, you're going to be like, what are you talking about? Look, in 2023, food's expensive. Food is expensive. Going to going to Walmart and buying, you know, five or 50 eggs. What is that? Five, well, a little more over five dozen, you know, somewhere around there, right? You're talking about almost $20. The Costco's a little bit better. I mean, gas is at, where we live. Gas is at $3.25. Other parts of the state. In the United States, I mean, you're talking four dollars, five dollars a gallon. And when you, the struggle is just trying to put food and sh on the table and shelter over your head, and one little thing happens, it, it feels like everything around you just crumbles down. It's like, what, what, what more? What next? What next? You know, you, then you you go into this the mindset. You read these books. You read all these people like you know. It, it's these events will have these events happen to you so you, you can learn from them. What 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 learned am I learning when somebody doesn't give me my wallet? It falls to the ground. What am I learning when we struggle and, and it's hard to get through these struggles, right? What am I learning that some things that I are out of my control, I, I'm we're being quote unquote punished for. The dark times what I do know about them is the light will always shine through. And in the moment, it is super hard and super difficult. And Pat even talked about it, right? I love that part where he opens up and he talks about the difficulty of opening and getting through. So how do you get through? How do we push through these dark times? How do we get through and get into a space where we feel we can start to feel a little bit better? Pat moved, right? He moved from from New York to where he lives today, Charleston, South Carolina. I'm not saying move. I'm not saying that you uproot everything and leave and have a, what they call a fresh start. I'm not. But what I am saying is a change in environment or a change in the normal process of doing things over and over and over again, the getting out of the groundhog day, that is what the message or the the point that Pat was making is changing it up. Like do something different. If if you, you take a certain route to work, try a different route. If you turn on specific music, well, what about not turning on music? What about turning on a podcast, putting on a book? 
if the weekend is one of those thing TGIF, right? If that's what it is and now I can go live, why not live throughout the day? Why not find stuff throughout the week that you can live on and not just a Friday or Saturday or Sunday? Why not find a way to inspire yourself and those around you to become better? It's difficult. I understand it. Like I'm not like I'm not saying that this is 100% what we do all the time. It's not. What I am saying is changing the scenery oftentimes will bring in the light. What about during the week you set specific times that are non-negotiable? They say this is I'm I'm doing this for myself. I'm doing this because this is what's going to help me to grow. What about getting up earlier? It's what you know everybody talks about like getting up early it's so difficult. I will tell you it's 100% difficult. You'll get up at 5 5:30 in the morning. <clears throat> I don't care 4 years ago, 5 years ago, it's still hard. It's still difficult. I still don't get up sometimes all the time all at the same time. Sometimes I'm, my body's like, "Hey, you better lay back down." Okay. I lay back down. But my mind is the one that's like, you got to get moving. So changing it up. How do we change the scenery? How do you go about changing that process? How do you go about changing that mindset of giving out of that mundane? And once you get into that place and that space, it's recognizing that you're there. And oftentimes it's very difficult to recognize when you are in that space. When you are, when you're there, you know when you're there. But how do you get out? How, how do you build that confidence to rise and move? You know, there's a lot of tricks to it. You know, Pat talks about, you know, going to therapy, a big advocate. I'm a big advocate of therapy. I've been to therapy a lot. 100% need the tools to push through. Talk, You know, Pat talks about getting on a prescription that can help balance it all out. There's nothing wrong with it. Sure, a lot of times these these prescriptions have a negative uh, push and a negative look. You don't want to feel like you're a broke person. You don't want to feel like you're different than somebody else. You want to feel like there's something wrong with you. So that's okay. Doesn't mean you have to be on all the time. Doesn't doesn't mean you that is the stigma around it. If, if it helps you, then do it. If it doesn't help, then stop. I know it's so easy to say, and like, your, your people are gonna be like, Cameron, you, you, if you've never been in that depths of darkness, you can't just simply say stop. You're a hundred percent right. You can't say just stop. But one thing you can do is reach out. And, you're, and how do you reach out? Sometimes it is doing the most simple things. Go stand outside in the sun and let it hit your face. Smile. Here, here's what I did. Let me, let me just bring you into this space. It was one weekend when I was, um, I didn't have my kids, right? It was a weekend that I didn't have my kids. Uh, we were I'm still, we we're still going through, you know, legal stuff. And I remember laying in bed. I went, I laid in bed at Friday. It was a Friday just after I got off work. I just laid in bed and I just laid there. And I, I was like, I can't, I didn't want to get up. I didn't went to bed and woke up. Don't know when I woke up. Sometime it was sunlight, but all day Saturday I just sat in bed, just sat there, just sat there, did nothing, couldn't physically move, could not physically get myself out of bed. I stayed that way all day Saturday. Did not do a single thing on Saturday. I didn't shower, I didn't eat. I was just lost, lost. And I remember, you know, often on in and out during the night and then Sunday waking up and going, if I don't get out of this bed, if I do not get out of this bed, I will not get out of this bed for a long time. If I don't get out and move and get moving, it, it's going to, uh, it's going to affect me. And so I did my, I, I, every, I remember laying there and just every fiber of my being, every ounce that it took for me to just roll over. I, I literally remember rolling out of bed. I catch myself before I fell and, and I army crawled. I army crawled to the back door where it, it, I could open up the doors and I just opened it up and let the cool breeze and let the, not cool because it was in Arizona at the time. And I remember just letting that, 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 that freshness of, it wasn't great freshness, but it was air coming through it. And I remember just 
putting my hand in the sunlight and and feeling the warmth and then putting my my you know my arm and then eventually my head and then eventually my body and then I remember just laying there I, I felt like for hours and it probably was uh, I, and the only reason I got up is because I got started to get super hot and I started I was sweating and I went in and got a drink of water and I was in the, in the now I'm moving and now I'm moving towards something I'm moving towards a progression and I showered um and I went out and I remember I don't really remember exactly what I did throughout the day, but I didn't, I mean, it was Sunday. I didn't, I didn't go to church. Um, I just was out in nature. I was just outside. And I, I, but specifically remember, I remember going to the mall and I remember I'm just going to smile as big as I can and as goofy as I can. I'm just going to smile. And a lot of you are like, I would never do that. You're right. It was at that time it was hard because I was just in a really bad place. And I sat there and smiled with the biggest smile on my face. And I go, when you're smiling, it's hard to frown. It's hard to be angry. It's hard to be mad. It's hard to have self-pity when you're smiling. And I remember just walking around, just smiling, just smiling. I hadn't eaten. I didn't even think I showered that day. But I'm smiling, just walking. And that was the change. That change of scenery char, char, uh, caused the chain of reaction that helped me progress and move. So that's one thing. That I just remember going back in that space. That's one thing I did to push through and grow and move through. Man, that was that was some dark times. But it was also that was the light. I'm grateful that I was able to share this. So let's get to this next clip because this is a powerful clip. I, after a few conversations, I think they just they got it. I was just mm -hmm. like, this isn't a, a question. This is what, you know, and, and I don't want to take too much credit here. You know, my fiance, Jamie, was a big driver in this too um because at that time i was feeling like i was six feet under the water and wasn't myself and i couldn't emote and, and i just wasn't myself and and so she was seeing that right because she was as best as i could i was trying to shield her from like the worst aspects uh you know i was dealing with people in the laundry room uh, and grocery shopping. And I was doing everything outside the house kind of thing. Uh, walking the dog at the same time, our dog had, uh, he shattered his leg in a park. The first time that we, we decided to see some friends in a park and meet up, he broke his leg. And, and so I, I was taking him to the vet and the vet had all these rules cause they were, you know, there's still a pandemic. Right. So, yeah. uh, I think I just took on too much and, but I mean, I don't regret it because I, I thought I was equipped to handle it, but you know, it's, it's not a thing of strength, right? I, I feel like a lot of times people who are really anxious or depressed view themselves as weak. And I think that that's bullshit. I think we're human being and human beings and we can, <laughs> we have, there, there are holes in the armor and, mm -hmm. and, anxiety is gonna find those holes yeah hey everybody i want to take this quick second here a lot of you asked me what journal do i use my family use simple this journal right here see my buddy craig smith has spent years and years developing a journal that takes everything that's up in here and puts it on paper so we can be edified and grow so if you don't know what to write about which oftentimes happens he gives you ideas and if you want power statements things that say i am this he gives you those ideas. Now, if when you look at on one page, it says, this is what I accomplished. This is what I am statements. And there's a quote every single day that you get to write on and, and focus on. The second page is write your daily thoughts, get it out of your head, put it on paper to be the best version of yourself. The link's down below. Listen, I get no money for this. It's just, I believe in this journal. I love this journal. It's changed my life, my family's life. And if you want, it'll change your life as well. All right, guys. Listen, um, <laughs> I have to laugh. I, I, I sarcastically giggle because this is this is me more, a lot of the times taking on way too much. And when I say take it on, it, it, it rests inside in between the six inches of my brain, right? It, it rests inside there and I take on way, way, way too much. And it, but it, it, it feels like it, to me, right, it feels like if I don't take this on or if I don't do this or I don't do that, then I don't, I'm not a quote unquote provider. Or I'm not a manly man or I'm not pulling my weight. or I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And it, it was in that it's in those times where we feel like 
we aren't doing enough. We're doing, sometimes we're doing way too much. As Pat talked about, talking about way too much and internalizing it, right? Internalizing what he was doing and not allowing it to come out in a way that was beneficial and also healthy. That to me is a big, big win for him, right? And it's also a big win for anybody who could recognize that when you take on too much and you get into a space where you're, it just it crushes your brain. It's too much of an overload. It's like driving a car in first gear with the gas pedal all the way down as trying to go as fast as you can. Eventually, that thing is going to blow. And when it blows up, there's no repair. And when we try to take too much on and we're not sharing the load, and sharing the load oftentimes is, is more of a mental thing than it is a physical thing. But not being able to share that load with with people, especially if you're in a relationship, you know, you want to try to share that load with others, with each other. That's a big thing. And communication is, is a massive thing. And we'll go back to, dang man, communication. For the longest time, communicating on my level um, has, was, has been the, the crutch that I have. It's, it, it's not, <clears throat> it's not that I don't know how, it's just, I feel like my, my chest and my bravado kicks in and bang on my chest. And I'm like, well, if I'm, you know, if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, then I'm not doing enough. And I feel like you feel like a failure. You feel like you're not, you're not pulling your weight. Not at all. Not at all. And then you slip into these unrealistic visions of yourself and these unrealistic ideas of who you're supposed to be because Everybody tells you you should be this. And when you say everybody, it's like the inside of your brain tells you you should be doing this or you don't shouldn't be doing that. Not at all. Not at all. You, you're doing, you have, let me say this. If you're still living, you're doing it right. If you get up every day, you're doing it right. If you make a conscious effort, become better every day, you're doing it right. If your kids come up to you and tell you they love you and grateful, you're doing it right. If you can look at yourself in a mirror and smile, you're doing it right. If you can give yourself a hug, you're doing it right. If you can laugh, you're doing it right. If you have a deep thought every day, you're doing it right. Now, these are just, I'm not saying you have to do all this, but if you're at any point, and there's more things we could add on to this, we could add so much more. But as you listen, find the small and simple things that you're doing that you can add on to. Like it's, a, it's like just putting another feather in a cap. We, I do this too. We, build, we beat ourselves up so much on the things that we're not doing. We need to focus on the things that we are doing. That's what's important. That's that's what's going to push us through these really difficult times that, that are now and that are coming. It's hard. But daily recognizing, daily affirmations of you are doing it right. Like the I am students are, I will stand by 100% because I've used them throughout my my life. I continue to use them. And when you can, when you can narrow in and zone in on this, that's where it's at. Don't be afraid to go get help. Don't be afraid to go into therapy. Don't be afraid to, to get tools to pull you up and pull you out. That's what it's all. The, that's that's the beauty of it. That's what Pat he gave he gave credit to his his beautiful wife on helping him get him to where he is. But it was bigger for him to allow the 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 help that he needed that he couldn't see. And he finally gave in He gave in and said, yes, I will allow you to help because I need the help. There's nothing wrong for asking. You are weak. If you don't ask for help, I'll say that again. You are weak. If you don't ask for help, you are weak. If you don't allow yourself to be helped, you are weak. If you don't allow others to be charitable to you, you're weak. If you don't allow individuals to give you the love, you're weak. If you can, if you don't allow people to speak nice to you, you're weak. I can say that because that's me. That was me for the longest time. People would always say, oh, you're doing such a great job. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm doing okay. Right. Or man, I love, I love, I, like you hear this. This is a great example. Two golfers are out on the golf course. And I heard this, I read this in a book and I'm going to butcher it, but I apologize. I'm trying to remember which the what book it was or where I read it. But anyways, 
guys are out on a golf course, right? And they hit a golf ball and somebody says, man, that was a great shot. And the guy who the compliment was being played to, uh, paid to said, that eh, was all right. Really? That just discredit the gentleman, the person who said that was a great shot. Here's another one. Man, these cookies are fantastic. And eh, they're not my best, but I guess they'll do. Really? You're not giving validation to the person who said these cookies are great. Here's another one. You look absolutely stunning today. I mean, I wish I could lose a few pounds or I wish I wasn't as wrinkled. But yeah, I guess I'm okay. Really? You're just discrediting what somebody just said. Here's another one. I love spending time with you. Hey, I wish we could, I, yeah, I wish I could do something better. Really? Come on. And, a lot, all, and I share these examples because a lot of them I've been the recipital, the recipiator of some, and I've also been the ones that have given them. It's hard. But I can tell you the more the more and more you allow and and welcome, welcome that help and welcome those that give you praise, if you will, and welcome those positive affirmations from somebody else, man, exponential growth, exponential growth. And I'm telling you that from personal experience, exponential growth, huge, man, this is, this interview was such a great interview. All right. Last clip, last clip, because this is power. Not like any of the, not like I know this, not, not like it already hasn't been power, but this, this one is is a man, money. Two to three principles or things that you can do to help your child. Obviously, counseling big one. Now, let's say I can't afford counseling. What are two to three things that you could counsel parents that with their children that are going through uh, some of this, um, some of these issues? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, Anxiety is about a lot, a lot about control. And, and as you're, when you're a kid, for good reason, uh, you don't have a lot of control. And so finding <laughs> ways to ha allow your kids to feel a freedom of choice in, in, in safe, you know, you're not going to be able to let them drive. You're not going to be able to let them do a lot of different things, but finding moments where they can feel a freedom of choice and not feel like they're boxed in because that this a psychologist recently was explaining to me anxiety um, related to, I think that episode was uh, public speaking that we feel like we have no choice as a, as a child and that stays with us as an adult. So we, we internalize that. So finding ways to, to help them feel like they have freedom of choice. Um, talking about your feelings talking about I think it's like speaking a, a, a another language to a kid right if, if you're speaking emotion to a kid at a young age they'll take that with them I mean what a what a gift that would be to know that like emotions are meant to be expressed and it's not uncomfortable when someone is expressing them to you right that's a lot of a lot of times people don't feel like they can hear what someone else is is saying to them because mm -hmm they're just not equipped to, to have that conversation. And so talking about emotions, talking about when you're wrong, right? And in some instances, you know, you can't really say that you were wrong, but just, just talking to them a little bit more like adults. Now I'm not a father, <laughs> but you know, and, and that's sort of like a pie in the sky, but it, but I think it makes sense where you're, you're, you're giving them the experience of emotion. And put and being able to express and give and take. Oh no, you may not be a father, but you but you are somebody that said this is what I did. This is what happened to me as a kid. Here's what we can do to fix the problem, right? And mm -hmm. it's okay to be expressive about emotion. Mm -hmm. um, something that a, a lot of us in, in a generation, right, with that thirty five. If you're thirty five and older, you're probably falling in that category where you just didn't express a lot of your emotions. At all. Mm. I still don't. I mean, I, 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 I suck so bad at that principle. Uh, it's, it, but it's something that I've, you know, I actively work on. 
Mm-hmm. But Good when for you, you, you have to, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was thinking, you know, it was kind of one of those things that you got you got punched, and if you started crying, you got punched harder, and if you kept crying, you just kept getting beat until you literally just stopped crying, and then you you just learned it. You just you just bite your lip and grip it and just take it right, and then it would mm-hmm. all of those emotions get just get suppressed. And then you try to have to be emotional, but you equate my emotion to being punished or punished in the sense of just getting punched, you know, mm-hmm. or, or being made fun of. So you, you, you're like, I'm not being emotional because I don't want to relive all of that as a kid. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this. Did what, because I hear you hear this, well, you know, depression or, or anxiety, something traumatic must have happened to you as a kid, right? You must have been, whether it was left alone or sexually abused or, you know, made fun of your entire life, you know, there had to be some kind of traumatic event that spurned on this. Is that true? Is it not? I mean, what, what, is there any validity behind some of those quotes that you hear? No, I don't, you know, I, I didn't have any, you know, I, I I had issues finding my way and, and making friends just like everybody else. But I think that's a major misconception that, something you know worthy of a, a an hbo series needed to happen to you before you have mental health issues there are just some people that are uh, a good example is a, a metaphor a friend of mine said everyone has a car alarm right equate anxiety to car alarms some cars if you you have to throw a baseball through the window before the the car alarm goes off and other people if you a light breeze comes by the car alarm goes off <laughs> my car alarm goes off just thinking about that breeze so it, it, it's just <laughs> we're all we're all wound to different tightness levels and I had a great childhood and yeah, like I said, you know, certainly had my moments where I was having problems making friends, but I think that's pretty common, right? Even when you feel like you have a lot of friends at, at younger ages, you could still feel alone. And, and that's another thing about growing up or, or being around New York city, right? You could be surrounded by so many people and, and, and feel so alone. Um, it, it doesn't mean anything traumatic happened to you, but you still have issues and, and you still deserve to to get help and and that's something that i feel strongly about you know i I feel sorry and and i I hope everyone that has had traumatic events um feel that way or 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 get the help that they need but certainly people who haven't had anything um go wrong you deserve the help too and and that makes me think of so on on 9-11 my dad was working in the towers and thankfully got out, uh, but such a, a mind shattering day. Talk about something traumatic. I mean, maybe yeah. there it is. Uh, <laughs> um, but I felt like I couldn't be sad because my dad came home. And so I stuffed all those emotions down. But that's ludicrous. I mean, this, this deeply traumatic thing happened to the city where, I mean, in the building that my dad worked in and you know, there were all these firemen and policemen that died and, and you know, it's just the world changed forever. And I, f- I was telling myself I couldn't be upset. Not the best way to deal with that, right? I mean, because that's, I, people were grieving in Wyoming, I'm sure, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it was a scary thing for everybody and your proximity to it doesn't always dictate how you can feel about it. It's scary. It's very real and it's very scary and uh, it's good to to deal with those emotions. Yes, look, there's a, there's a lot to unpack in this one. That's why I let it run for a little bit longer. Uh, but there's there's a couple of, there's there's two parts really essentially right. He goes in depth. It's such great depth about the you know his childhood was a great childhood. He was just tightly wound and, and understanding you know how parents can interact with their children. I for one, struggled a lot with this because I didn't really recognize when, you know, this anxiety in children. I I didn't. Um, I didn't recognize it because, one, I just didn't want to think that's what it was. I just thought they were, uh, you know, lack of better words, you're just being a bunch of babies, right? They were. I I wouldn't say they were being babies. That's the thought process that was going through my mind is they're just a bunch of babies. And they were kids, 
The kids trying to understand this world, the kids trying to get through life and kids just trying to balance, you know, work or not work, but, but home life and, and school life and, and wanting to feel accepted, you know, as kids and then turmoil. Like my kids went through my, the Brown kids we have, they went through a lot of you know, turmoil. I mean, divorce and, and move through it. The white kids did the same thing, divorce and moving from one state to another state. That's a lot of turmoil. That's a lot of moving parts and a lot of parts that they had no control over, right? They didn't. They didn't have any control over it. They were just being kids. They were just like, we're just kids. I, I, and so for me, it's like listening to this, you know, understanding, recognizing anxiety from a, a kid's perspective. No clue. No clue. And I don't think I was in, in a space for me to look at it and go, yeah, that's what it is. It just wasn't. I wasn't. It, it, what you don't know is what you don't know. But now when I listen to this, it's like, okay, how do you balance anxiety? How do you balance moving away and separating from thinking, okay, my kid is just being a kid to my kid is just overreacting on some things or my kid really does you know, have some, some things that we got to be sensitive to and sensitive in the sense of sometimes too much energy exerted can, can cause it, right? Uh, I, I'm a naturally just wound up, ready to go, full of energy, um, here, here one minute, gone a second minute. I, that's just how I am. And, and, I, and I plan, I have never planned saying, hey, okay, we're going to do this and this and this. It's always been a spur. Hey, let's go here. Let's go there. That's great for me. But for a lot of people, uh, you know, I have kids that are, are, are that same, are that, are this way of, they would love a plan. They would love to have time to be able to process. Okay, we're going here and this is what we're going to do. Oh, okay. So let's plan it out. Let's give them for some some notice, right? <laughs> give them at least you know more than just ten minutes of notice. Like let's give them some time, and that's okay. Changing up how you how you interact and speak, and parent is 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 a good thing, because not everybody is is built to just jump on the spur of moment. We're going here. We're going to go do this. Let's go have fun, 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 fun. Some of them are like, look, I am more content being in just in my room or by myself in my space that I want to be in and reading a book or, or drawing or, or just being by myself. I just want my own alone time. And that's completely fine because that's a lot of times what, what helps them. And for me to having to recognize that and say, okay, you don't need You don't need the constant, you know, injection of energy. You don't need this constant. Uh, I'm here and present. You don't need that. What, Let's figure out what works for you. Let's figure out how can I fill your bucket? How can I fill that space that you feel loved and you feel safe and protected? That's what I think I loved that from what Pat was talking about because it, I learned and I continue to learn. Shout out to the hot wife, right? Because, man, she's helped me understand that not everybody is built how I am. And, and that you may think, well, that's kind of egotistical, like thinking everybody is built like you. That's not at all what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I just, I'm, I'm a, a person that just goes, goes and goes. If I sit still for too long, I get super anxious and my hands move, my body moves and it doesn't work. So recognizing in your individual kids and in, not even only yourself, but in your partners and those you interact with, you know, how is the best way for them to receive, um, information from you how is the best way for them to be able to be put in the best position to not feel super overwhelmed not feel like they're losing control or they don't have a say or they don't have any control what is the best position or what is the best way to communicate with them on a level that helps them understand that you're not we're not just going 50 miles or 100 miles an hour let's 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 be smart about this right let's have a great experience we always talk about creating memories with our children and that's one way of doing it creating memories within ourselves that's huge too. We want to create those memories. So I love that. I love how he, how Pat walked us through that process of, of him um, understanding that, that, that was, oh man, man, that was so good, man. That was so good. And, and the second point is this. I love how he talked about how, you know, his dad worked in the towers and during 9-11 and his dad came home and there were so many of his peers and people that he knew and people that he didn't know that he saw that their, their dad didn't come home. Their, their dad didn't come home or their parent didn't come home or someone that they knew they love, trust, respected, did not come home. And he felt bad because 
his dad was able to come home and somebody else's parent wasn't able to come home. And he was like, how do I, how do I have joy in that when knowing somebody else, it didn't work for, we didn't work out for them like it did for me. Man, that is, to me, that was like an eye opener. I'm like, I've never really thought or I've had the ability to sit and just because the opportunity never presented itself. But there's a, but listening to him, how many people, and he talks to a lot of therapists, a lot of people who comes onto his show, shout out to his show, right? That gives me anxiety podcast. He talks a lot about, he talks to a lot of people that that are in that same space or have been in that same space. But I think that is, it is so critical for us to be sensitive. And I've learned so much how to be more sensitive, how to show more compassion, more love, more empathy for, for individuals that are, are just going through their own, their own issues and, and everybody going through their own issues, but how to be more aware, right? I think this is the best word for me is how to be more aware of opportunities for me to, to come and, and not to the rescue, but, but be a listener, to be someone who can give an ear or someone that is, is, can say, I'm not, I'm not going to try to solve it, but go ahead and talk, like talk, talk how you want to talk. Like you want to talk, talk. I will shut my mouth and you talk and I'm not going to say anything, but I'll be here for you. I'm not going to judge you. I'll be a sounding board that you can just scream and yell because that to me is the biggest win. That to me is the biggest thing for me is to be a, a conduit for somebody to help. It, it, to be a conduit for somebody that I can help and they can just dump stuff on me. I think that's fantastic. I mean, I just in a space, I'm in a space where that can happen. You you guys are probably like different variations of spaces, which is, you know, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But Pat, talking about how he just couldn't find, he felt bad to having joy because his dad, I've never been, I've just, I've never experienced something like that. But listening to that, wow, that was powerful. That was really powerful, really eye-opening to me on that that thought process of how can I find joy when there's so many around me that it's, that it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be really, really hard. And look, you always remember big events, those big tr- those big events in life, right? And oftentimes they're all traumatic events. Like I remember exactly where it was during 9-11. I remember when the, I remember my sixth grade year when the, the, the spaceship blew up. I remember exactly where I was sitting. You always remember those massive events. I also remember, you know, when my kids were born, seeing that. I remember all that. That was fantastic. I remember the event when my wife, when my, the hot wife and I got married. Yeah, that was fantastic. I remember when I asked her, and we won't get into that story. Because it, that, that's for a different podcast and different time. <laughs> but you remember these events. And I think for me, it's about having those massive, those good, good events, those core memories, superseding some of those bad memories. But also being sensitive to the people around me that have gone through so much in their life and, and are still working through and processing and still pushing through. Being a, a voice and being a sounding board for people is huge. Now, don't take on too much. I'm not saying go out and say, hey, message me and call me. I'll be your sounding board. No, I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is when you get into a space where you can help those simply by listening, taking them out, giving them giving them the opportunity to just get things off their chest, phenomenal. Phenomenal. You are absolute angels and godsend for those individuals. Hundred percent, you are. You are put perfectly in their pi- in their in their place and their path to be what they need you to be at that point in their life. Man, just go back and listen to all of that. Go back and this interview has been so eye opening about a disease and about mental illness and about gosh, man, just just. Uh, Oh, bringing awareness. Thank you, Pat. Thank you for bringing awareness to all of us, especially, I mean, to someone like me. And there's probably thousands and thousands of people, millions of people that are like me, like just, they don't know. What you don't know is what you don't know. And I could not have asked for a better better person to come on than Pat being so open and honest in, in his dealings and his struggles. Now, listen, he talked a lot about, uh, we went through a lot of the things that were joy and happiness, but I wanted to highlight those four key principles and those four points because those those had such a massive impact on me and it has really opened my eyes and allowed me to see things differently and to see things clearly.
and to find ways to help out myself, even when I get into the dark times and slip in those times, to be a lot better, to be a lot better person individually, to be a lot better husband, to be a lot better a dad and a brother and a son, and a, 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 you know, and a grandparent. I mean, I love it. Oh my gosh, guys! I just want to say thank you so much for listen. Share this with somebody who needs it, right? Share. Share this podcast. And you guys are doing a phenomenal job. I cannot thank you enough for all the love, the support, the shout out, comment. If you have not yet, please go on and give us a review. I'd love to hear the reviews. I'd love to hear what we could do better. Because the only way this show grows is when you guys give me feedback. But thank you for sharing and liking and commenting. Thank you for being the voice. Thank you for being the inspiration for people around you. Thank you for being who you are in your impeccable journey of this life and being better every single day and if all you can do is smile then smile as big and as wide as you can and if all you can do is simply open your eyes and just know that the, today is the day the greatest day mindset shout out to craig smith and his journal right the focus journal just making today the greatest day ever Shout out to my buddy Brandon Holmes who talks a lot about the I, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you every single day. Go back and, and listen to him. Find him on Instagram. He talks about how he tells himself that every single day. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. When you start injecting your head with those affirmations and that mindset that I'm going to just be 1% better today, man, we will be better. You will be better and we are better because of you. Thank you again for all that you do. Thank you for all the likes, the comments, and shares. Thank you for giving us a rating uh, and helping others. You guys are taking this globally. It's because we're bringing things to the forefront that we all need to talk about. And this is just one of those phenomenal episodes. Thank you so much. This has been a great episode. And this has been another great recap of an interview on the Arch Stuff. You have a great day and I will catch you again.